Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing something slightly different. We're going to be talking about Cora Sanhagen's mindset and in particular the identification of the ego or ego states. If you haven't already watched that Joe Rogan episode with Cora Sanhagen, it's a very interesting conversation and I will put a little time here somewhere on the screen to where is the best place to watch from so it's like the clip of it and it starts off with talking about Mike Tyson's mindset and how Corey has taken on this mindset and it's very interesting how these guys get themselves into that mind frame to fight someone. Taking on Mike Tyson's mindset has really helped Corey improve in his fights, he's seen it recently against Marlon Moraes and Frank Edgar. He's managed to get two emphatic knockouts by changing it to almost like, as he said in that podcast, looking to actually hurt someone. So it's changing that mind frame from the normal. And this was actually a result of him being able to identify his egos. So there's a very interesting section where Corey talks about naming his egos. So he had an ego called Samson, for example, which was an angry ego. And often, you know, if he didn't need that, then he could recognise it was there and maybe push it to the side and say, not now, Samson, maybe later. And there was another one called Charlie, who is his fun ego. And once again, it's kind of recognising it being there, but not necessarily letting it take control of you or become who you are. It was interesting how Corey identified these as almost like little demons or you know those kind of thoughts which aren't actually quite that useful in that particular moment but it's important to be addressing them so by identifying them, by naming them, Corey isn't avoiding the difficult thoughts, he's actually addressing them and acknowledging the existence and this allows him so that when these thoughts do come up at particular points, maybe just before the fight, as he uses as an example, he's already went through that and he understands those thoughts rather than having neglected them earlier. And as a result, this allows him to be true to himself and know himself better and also allows him more control over these thoughts when he recognises them, not as himself, but just the thoughts that come up in his mind. Corey talks about how sitting in his bed, just letting the thoughts come by and going on these alone ventures into the woodlands can allow him to really sit in his thoughts and understand more truly to himself. And this kind of links back to stuff I do in my life where I do my meditation, my yoga, and maybe my Wim Hof method when I go in the pond. It forces me to kind of be in that present moment and not be too distracted with other things, allowing myself to truly kind of feel what's going on in my own head. Often in life, we spend a lot of time distracted by social media, conversations with other people, and this can mean that we kind of lose ourself in the process. And in a fighting situation where it's like you're pushing yourself to the limit, you're putting yourself in a very dangerous situation, all these kind of thoughts are going to pop up. And if you haven't addressed them, they could become a problem in the fight. Corey talks about in the Frankie fight, how he didn't really feel like fighting that morning. But because of these practices, because of him addressing his thoughts, he was able to recognise this and actually change it rather than allowing that to be his state. It seems to be these alone adventures, these times when you spend time alone without anyone else, that allows for these moments of addressing your thoughts and your egos. And this comes in useful for fighting, but also it seems to be correlated with other people or basically all people. So it's a great practice to do is spending time alone. Some great examples are with Boyd Varty, who has just done a podcast with Aubrey Marcus, which is a really interesting one about being away 40 days on your own. And another one is Ed Stafford, a bit more well known for his being marooned in an island and I think he's done like 60 days alone. So it's a very long time these guys are spending on their own. 
And Ed Stafford talks about it a bit in the Russell Brand podcast about being alone and how he didn't have that feedback or reflection from other people on what is good and bad and therefore he was kind of left to himself which kind of evaporated his feeling of self and he even says how he was vomiting on the beach because it felt sickening that feeling but as a result you kind of address yourself and you can be therefore truer to yourself and Ed talks about basically having a more moral compass because you know what you feel better. Your emotional intelligence goes up and I think this is really important for fighting because it's important to have that emotional intelligence during a fight. As we know, fighting on emotions isn't good if you can't control what you're feeling and you've seen this in fights recently even like the Gilbert Burns versus Usman fight Gilbert kind of went out for it and even reference to Cody Garbrandt and how he got emotional in the Pedro Munoz fight and you can see these examples not really paying off and how it's not about just being aggressive with no control it's being able to really be able to address everything in your mind and therefore be able to fight optimally. A quote from Eckhart Tolle is, realize deeply that the present moment is all you have. And this is a crucial, important factor to think about because in a fight you wanna be present and completely in that moment so that you're alert. And this can only be possible if you can kind of let go of the ego and be able to control it better because otherwise those past moments will come into the present. Furthermore, Eckhart talks about being alert, basically, so being alert to your ego. And there's a difference between knowing that that was your ego and not knowing. It's like he says in, once again, the Russell Brown podcast, you probably know now, I listen to a lot of that. You know that that's your ego talking and those are your ego thoughts, which changes the thing. So he uses analogy of if you're insane but you know you're insane that means you're not completely insane so if you don't know you're insane then that's almost completely losing the plot whereas if you at least know and are alert of it then it changes how things are so if obviously Corey didn't identify with his egos and he just turned into just fight zone then that will become who he is and you wouldn't recognize that just being one process of thoughts. Corey also talks about how your ego wants comfort and the most kind of easy thing for yourself, which is of course kind of somewhat of a survival mechanism we have within us. And this causes us to kind of choose easier decisions. And when you come to a fight, if we're too comfortable, then of course when somebody puts you in a discomfortable situation, it's gonna be worse so it's kind of keeping the discomfort in your life for myself with the pond or holding a long yoga pose this can be a discomfortable thing and you know thoughts arise maybe i should move out of this position maybe i should get out of the cold but being able to recognize those as your ego talking for comfort then you can kind of separate yourself from this and make your own decision an example of a comfortable thought that Corey suggested was basically denying your opponent's skill set. So, for example, with the Aljo and Sterling fight, he could say that Aljo has great grappling but no striking. Of course, this is not true, and it's kind of a lie to yourself to say that, and it's to kind of create that comfort zone once again that you're going to be all right. But it's better just to be true to yourself because you know what that truth is and if you don't address it then of course when you come to the fight you're gonna get those little demons come in and they're not going to be useful for you so a lot of interesting stuff about Corey Sanhagen his mindset and his ego identifications as today you can see I'm wearing a cap this may be because I'm identifying with my physical looks ego because I haven't had to be able to get a haircut or due to lockdown. So it's cool to be able to recognize these things and it's also a cool concept in just general life, whether you're training for a fight 
or whether you're just doing a sport of any sort, whether you're learning a new skill. Sometimes when I'm learning new skills, I find myself feeling almost unworthy, not good enough. And this is just my ego saying, like, I need to get that external gratification. So it's good to be able to recognise these things. If you haven't already, please, please do check out that podcast. It is very interesting. Once again, I'll put the time, wherever, of where it's best to watch in this podcast if you don't have enough time to watch the whole thing. And it will start off with the Tyson mindset, but it will go into how Corey thinks, and it's very insightful and interesting to watch. Anyway, I hope you like this video. It's a bit of a different thing. Please leave me a comment and let me know what I could improve upon and whether you want something like this in the future. Otherwise, please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time.